Welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. In this video today, I'm going to tell you how to start the Cessna C408 Sky Courier from the cold and dark state. This video is for the beginners, so that's why I will just try to keep things really simple and to the point so that you are able to start this plane. Because uh, every time when I'm making a video, I'm making it for the beginners, so I'm assuming that you have little or no knowledge about the flight simulation. It's a very easy uh, plane to fly, especially for those people who have been flying the Cessna 172. You will be able to fly it quickly because it has a G1000. All you have to do is this, just understand some controls and uh, some switches, how to you know uh, start this plane from the cold and dark stick and that's it. You will be just flying this plane. The best thing about it is this, that you know it has a greater speed than 172 and it can go up to like 25,000 feet. So you can just have some high altitude flights with it and uh, you can just reduce the time of the flight if uh, as compared to the Cessna 170. So this is the cockpit and uh, it's a really simple cockpit. Uh, you can see the three screens for G1000. This is the prime flight display. On the right hand side, you also have the prime flight display. In the middle, you have the navigation display. Now these levers have different functions. Uh, these two levers are known as the engine condition levers. They control and the flow of the fuel to the engine. And these two levers, they actually control the pitch of uh, uh, the propellers, which uh, changes the RPM. And uh, then these two levers are for the thrust. So just make sure that uh, the thrust is in the idle position. Otherwise, you will not be able to uh, start the engines. Then uh, this is the lever for the flaps. That's it. No landing gears. <laughs> they are just... Uh, Extend it throughout the flight, cannot retract them. And uh, let's uh, get rid of the yoke first and let's get some power in the plane. You can see this uh, battery switch. If you move it towards the left side, you have the power from the ground power unit. And if you move it towards the right, then the batteries will start. That's it. Now we have some uh, power in the plane. Now it's time to basically make sure that uh, the emergency lights are on. And then let's uh, turn on the nav and the beacon light. As a beginner, um, I will just give you an introduction. The nav lights are on the wingtips. If you see a green light, uh, you'll know that the plane is going towards its right side, especially in the night. And if you see a red light, it means the plane is going towards its left side. And then you have the beacon. Uh, this has to be on before you start the engine because it will tell the ground staff that you're going to start the engine and it remains on throughout the flight till the time you land and you turn off the engines. That's it. Now something about uh, the propeller condition levers. They actually change the pitch of uh, the propellers and the RPM changes. They remain maximum uh, during the takeoff. Uh, then at the, the cruising altitude you can reduce the RPMs but you have to just uh, reduce them in such a way that the speed doesn't reduce. And then you can just like have a good combination of uh, the thrust and uh, the pitch or the, R or the RPM in order to have a good speed at the cruising altitude. And then during the descent, you can even keep them in the idle position. Right now, they move to this position feather, uh, which basically changes the pitch of uh, the propellers in such a way that they are aligned with the airflow. Right now, you can see they're feathered. They actually don't create drag if they're in this position. So basically, they are feathered right now, as you can see. But if I will move it forward, I have uh, control T and G. By default, you have it on, on the keyboard. If you press T, they will go all the way forward. Now you will see the pitch changing. So that's how the propellers work and uh, they propel the air. By the way, this was amazing. <laughs> I really like it. Uh, this is the best ever prop plane that you can start with. And then you will be able to, you know, fly the ATR as well. So just make sure that these levers are all the way forward. You can use the keys T and G. That's it. Now over here, you will see this uh, option auto ignition for the left and for the right engine. So first of all, let's turn on the right engine. Turn the switch on. Turn on the boost and then the starter. Now you can see NG. Basically, this is the rotation. It increases when it's at 12%. You can just move the right engine condition lever to have a good flow of the fuel. Just move it all the way forward.
and now you can see that the right propeller is moving great at 50 percent just turn off the starter and the boost that's it and the auto ignition so you can see you're getting some good ng great now uh, for the left engine just repeat the procedure at 12 percent just move this lever all the way forward Sorry, I was about to get rid of this caution. Now, just move it forward after 12%. And now the left engine will also start. That's it. So you keep on getting these warning alerts. But uh, that's it. Above 50%, you can just turn it off. And now you can fly this plane. <laughs> now there are a few things you have to do before you fly. Now, these uh, two switches are actually for the generator. Uh, they charge the battery. Uh, just like in Cessna 172, you have alternator. So they work as an alternator. Uh, they charge the battery, so they have to be on. That's it. And uh, then just uh, arm auto feather. You will see this option over here, auto feather. So in case of an engine failure, the auto feather will happen as I've shown you before. So the angle of the blades will change the propellers to have uh, some less drag. And that's it. And now it's time to turn on the bleed air. And that's it. And now you can press enter over here to get the navigation display working. So if you just uh, turn it on, then the engine information will be shown over here. So you can see the fuel flow and other information related to engine. That's it. So this is how you start this plane from the cold and dark state. And everything is uh, looking good so far. And uh, you can just uh, try flying it. <laughs> just. Uh, do some flights with it if you know how to configure the G1000 and you will really enjoy the flights with it. If you've got any questions, you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add anything to this video, the comment section is there for you. Thank you very much for staying with me. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.